Now you're back in, in America, the land of civilization, where everybody's a fucking asshole. Yeah, I will say, though, things that I do not miss about Ireland, ice in my drinks. So it's not a thing there. Everything's served room temperature, and maybe they put, like, one or two ice cubes in it. They're not super into cold drinks. I am excited about a strong Wi-Fi signal. Oh, my God, yes. Because even the places that had Wi-Fi, it was not quick Wi-Fi. And then you got to Bally Bunyan, and I was like, fuck you. And the satellite TV. For some reason, somebody decided to put satellite TV in a country where rain and wind are the norm. Like, our TV at the guest house just went out every 20 minutes. Like, we just gave up on it, because why? You got satellite TV on a coastal town in Ireland. It's because nobody wants to run a fucking cable line for one dude. Is your dad's town small enough that everyone knows everyone else? Yes. In fact, we went to get takeaway one night, and it turns out that we were related to the woman running the takeaway. Never met her before, but we're related. So, yes, it is that small. Okay, intro time. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I, our last story tonight, I'm not, I'm just, you're going to get lulled into a false sense of security, kids. I'm warning you. If you're watching this on the recording, if you're watching this live, um, you're going to get lulled in. So don't get comfy, all right? Don't get comfy thinking everything's going to be fine because it's not going to be fine. Nothing's going to be gonna fine. Everything's going to be fine, you guys. Everything's going to be fine. Let's start with Louisiana. Um, they're, they're one of the, the, the problems of doing contract work, especially when it comes to repairs and such, is if you don't get paid for your work, you're kind of fucked. Yeah. You have little recourse. Didn't stop this dude from taking the worst possible option. Louisiana roofer arrested after taking back roof. Oh. You know, I think that's fair. <laughs> you don't pay for your roof? I take your roof back. I don't... Monroe, Louisiana. Louisiana roofer faces misdemeanor charges after repossessing a roof because he hadn't been paid. How do you repossess a fucking roof? You tear that motherfucker off. Authorities arrested 66-year-old Andrew Jackson Higdon III. All right, now that's a name. They named him after the that that president. Right. They named but two people did that beforehand. Yeah. Um. He was on charge of simple criminal damage to property and criminal trespass. Higdon was freed after posting $4,500 bond. The arrest warrant says a uh, deputy responded to a property damage complaint. The victim says Higdon verbally agreed to replace her roof in June and wait for payment until her insurance issued a check. The victim says Higdon started asking for payment around mid-December. She said she could partially pay, but he wanted the full amount. She says he told her if she didn't pay... He would take the roof and her house would be damaged when it rained. All right, that's kind of dickish. The guy's a bit of a dick. Yeah. I it's... mean, he's living up to the name. Yeah. He even looks a little like the guy. He does. He look, he's got a little bit of that Andrew Jackson going on. Look, th th there's a reason that handymen don't do this. And the reason is, if you go and smash up something you built, you're not getting any money out of smashing the thing. You can't resell that roof. Yeah. And now you have a re bad reputation. Yes. Because now everybody is going to know that that's some Angie's List shit, shit right there. <laughs> Your Yelp review is going to be like, uh, good work, work, sturdy, reliable. Then he took it back. Until he tore it down. Until he tore it down. This is, I just Dan was really fascinated in Ireland by the thatched roof cottages. 
we went to the folk park and that's the kind of house my dad grew up in so he <laughs> found those really interesting literally he did he did that that just seems like a recipe for fire no because it's all everything's always wet point it rains all the time it rains every day point so point. and that, but they 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 layer the thatch so thick that the rain doesn't get in but all the houses are stone as well so fire's not a problem uh, well next up it's florida so welcome back um the funny springs florida that's that's a fun one to say you know there are th <sighs> When it comes to police, I go out of my way to avoid taunting those motherfuckers. At yeah. any given turn. That I don't I couldn't imagine why someone would. And you know what? I bet this guy is wondering why he did too. Come and get me. The funny X Springs man arrested after doing donuts in front of deputy with beer in hand. Really? A man who taunted deputies on his four-wheeler with a beer in hand is now in cu custody. <laughs> don't say. <laughs> don't say. Saturday evening, deputies attempted a traffic stop when three four-wheelers uh, for driving on a county-maintained road. Two of the four-wheelers stopped. A third fled from the stop. A white male driving the third four-wheeler later returned to the traffic stop. Okay, at this point, he had gotten away. He, and he came back. He came back to the traffic stop, began taunting the deputy and driving in circles in the middle of the road, shouting, come and get me. Challenge accepted. You dumb motherfucker. I, you were, you were gone. You won. You, you got away. You had, you were gone. How did you? What? You were free! I... Uh, shortly after, a digital... Like, are those, are those like, goggle tan lines? <laughs> he's rocking? It looks... Is, yeah, you can see the strap there. You can see yeah, the he's got, like, the reverse raccoon. That is really sexy. Um... Shortly after, additional deputies arrived in the area. When deputies turned down Margaret Boulevard, the four-wheeler accelerated rapidly... Uh, in front of the patrol and swerved around it. The suspect was seen holding a beer can in his left hand and yelling as he went by. Okay, why are you taunting them? Why? Do not taunt happy fun cops. <laughs> Do not taunt happy fun cops. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I... And it's like at every turn, he's like, first, he got away. And came back. So that's the first making it worse. Second, he does the donuts in the road and screams, come and get me. So that's... Her, her, you can't catch me. Her, 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 her. And then as they are catching his ass, he's screaming at them with a beer can. Every I making bet. it worse. He took all of the making it worse. I bet it was shitty beer, too. I'll take making it worse for a thousand, Alex. Oh, look, it's the daily fucking double. Yeah. And you bet it all. You, and, and you, you got, you got away. You didn't even answer in the form of a question. You won. You won. Why would you come back? Why would you come back? I mean, I guess good loyalty to your friends. But what were you going to fucking... You know what you would have accomplished better? Ba being out of jail so you could bail them out later. Well, well, were they, they even getting arrested? It was just a traffic stop. Like, they were going to get a ticket. Well, now they're, <laughs> they're going to jail. Right. Bless your heart. Oh, bless here's your stupid fucking heart. Here's another bless your heart. Jesus H. Christ. Um, this comes from South Carolina. Yeah, we've got these fucking monsters in South Carolina, too. We've got them all along the coast. The, the... When you live among prehistoric fucking 
beasts that are killing machines. Why in God's name would you fucking do this? South Carolina Resort says, throwing carrots at a gator, new level of stupid. Yeah. Profile in South Carolina. Officials at a South Carolina resort are looking for the people who harassed an 11 foot alligator by throwing Jesus. carrots at him. Why? Um, the uh, packet, uh, the island packet, Hilton Head reports that Fripp Island naturalist Jessica Miller says the people were lucky because the large animal did respond and slid back in the water. Facebook post says Fripp Island has a description of the people who threw the carrots. The fine is $200 per carrot thrown. You see, you're, it's illegal to taunt alligators. Be it's also really dumb. That's why it's illegal. They will fuck you up. You've heard the term poking the bear? Yeah. It's a bit like that. You see, if you make the alligator mad, it has literally a lizard brain. Yeah. It's just going to be mad. And it's not they're, going to say... They're death machines. It's not going to stop and say, which one of you idiots made me mad? And do you know how they kill you? Oh, <laughs> they drag you underwater. Yes. And then they roll you to tire you out while you struggle, so you drown faster. All while you've got this giant clamp. Right. You, uh, but this... they drag you underwater to the bottom, and then they roll you to encourage you to struggle, so you tire out faster yeah. and die. The PSI on alligator jaws is insane. You can keep, the, the, here's a funny little, th here's some, hey, Nature Channel shit about alligators. You can keep their mouths closed incredibly easily. A standard rubber band, just a yeah. regular rubber band, you can keep an alligator's mouth closed. But try to open that shit up, you need the jaws of life. I'm not, that's not even me. That's literally, you need shit like the jaws of life to open they, it up. They're made for death. And why would you throw carrots at it? It's not Bugs Bunny. It is not not to turn this whole thing into Ireland anecdotes, but <laughs> the other thing that Dan was sort of mystified by is that there's no real predators in Ireland. Like there's birds of prey, but people pretty much let their cats and dogs run around. And we were talking about it. And I'm like, there's no like there's foxes and otters, the occasional angry badger. But like <laughs> the wildlife in Ireland is really pleasant. Like, even we asked my cousins, he asked them, he's like, what's the scariest? And they're like, otters can be mean. <laughs> also, there's an animal I've never heard of. It's called a stoat. I don't know what a stoat <laughs> is, but at one point, her cousin was giving us directions and said, do you remember where I told you the stoat was? You're going to turn left there. Actual directions. That was the city cousin, yeah. too. So apparently it's a kind of weasel, <laughs> but yeah, there's no gators in Ireland is, you know, there's crows fucking everywhere. Like n now I get, cause I never noticed before that now, now I'm like, well, now I want to know why there's a crow goddess because Jesus, the crows, but, uh, yeah, no, no gators it's, or anything scary at all. Really? It's, it's, it's just one of those things about you. And it's $200 fine per each instance of taunting. So for every fucking carrot, you they've got your description. They're going to find you. You could they have are. killed somebody, you fucking idiot. And just leave them alone, man. Like, why? I don't know. First of all, it's dumb. He going to eat your ass. Second, it's just not nice. Oh. Like, look at this poor guy with a carrot stuck to his head. Please, I feel sorry for the alligator. I know. He doesn't need that shit. Damn. Oh, all I'm right. not bothering anybody. Well, I'll get a Jersey story for you, Tara. Jersey. Um, And it is, I think this is what, this is kind of a quintessential Jersey story. Um, oh, it's a little heartwarming. Um. Have you have you ever been really drunk but need to drive home? 
No, actually. I'm pretty responsible with my drinking. Or have you been the friend to pitch in, to drive? Yes. When someone was really drunk and needed to drive. I have been sober sister. Well, take those two aspects, mix them up, and you have a complete misunderstanding of the intent. Women take turns driving drunk in New Jersey, both smash into no. parked cars. They allegedly told cops they were trying to figure out who was less drunk and who could drive. If that's the question, call <laughs> a fucking cab. 24-year-old Virginia woman allegedly driving drunk in New Jersey over the weekend smashed into two parked cars, then switched seats with her allegedly drug friend, who crashed into another two vehicles. Officer responding to a 911 call in Hoboken found uh, Jamila Banks of Alexandria, Virginia, in the front seat of her SUV. Janelle Green, 23-year-old from Newark, was behind the wheel. Police say both women reeked of alcohol and reported they had been at a club allegedly told co cops they were trying to figure out who was less drunk and who could drive. Both were over the legal limit. One had a blood alcohol of 0.17. The other had a one of 0.14. Those cops didn't specify who was more drunk. They banged up the SUV so badly they couldn't drive it. If you're wondering who's more drunk, you're both fucking drunk. Like, if that's even a discussion... It's not. Call a cab. More drunk is a party game. It's yeah. not it's it's not a way to determine who's taking who home. No. Don't they are like thank God they only hit parked cars. And not people. I'm wondering if halfway through this they forgot what the point was. Okay. Okay. I only hit two cars. I only hit two cars. And she she was like, I can beat that. I can beat that. No, the you're Hoboken, not. Depending on where they were, like, it's not like suburban the way most of Jersey is. Like, it's not New York City, but it's city ish. Hmm. It's pretty tightly packed. So they could fucking hurt somebody. It's not like my town where they roll up the sidewalks at 9 p.m. Like, there's people out at night in Hoboken. I, I just. It. Uh... <sighs> this is not a. T I mean, it, if any, if you're trying to decide which of you is more drunk, at least involve a sober person. Yeah, you need a yeah. referee. Get, it on, get a get a rational third party. <laughs> you need somebody who you know can call can throw a flag on the play. Yeah, you need one. a fucking referee. Because <laughs> you guys are not exactly you know. I wouldn't call you impartial. No. I am not drunk. No, I'm fine, bitch. I'm fine. I only, I only hit two cars. I'll hit two. I bet you can't hit more than... No, that's not how the game works. <laughs> that's not what we're doing, that's not Rachel. what we're doing. <laughs> oh... They damaged four vehicles, three Hondas, and one Nissan. No injuries were reported. It's <laughs> funny that they only hit Japanese cars. Oh, they hit a lot of sensible drivers. Yeah. Well, speaking of hitting things... Oh, God damn it! It's one of these again. Who's got the scoreboard? God damn it! A uh, man charged with stealing fire department amulets from St. Bernard Hospital. God damn it. What is with this shit? Oh, when you hear his reason, you're going to get double mad. A man who had just left St. Bernard Hospital stole an ambulance and drove for about a block, crashing into a light pole and a street sign before he was taken into custody. Rodney Nicholson, 34 have been charged with felony possession of a stolen vehicle and felony criminal damage to property as he drove from St. Bernard Hospital. Police say Nicholson was waiting to be treated at St. Bernard Hospital when he grew impatient and disruptive, 
prompting staff to eject him. Spokeswoman said the person who stole the ambulance had been examined at the hospital's emergency room and was leaving after decided he didn't want to be treated further as a disruptive patient was brought to the emergency room by paramedics. It appears that after the patient was brought to the hospital by paramedics, the first man, identified by police as Nicholson, got into the ambulance and drove off. So he was he was not getting seen fast enough. Mm-hmm. And he stole the ambulance. Why? Were you going to go to a better hospital? If you're well enough to run out and steal the fucking ambulance, your shit might not be an emergency. Yes. That's now, I say that it's possible he was there because he's uninsured and the emergency room is the only place he could get care. That is possible. But that doesn't make you not a dick. Yeah. And and the emergency room, they have... they. They kind of do triage. They have to prioritize who comes in. Right. And I'm sorry, the guy with the staple gun attached to his head, gushing blood. You know, the 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 the, the person who's got like you know half their arm is gone. Um, they take priority over you. Yeah. And I know some people have to. The way our fucking health system is, like Tara said, some people have to use the ER for their health care. But that's not exactly, a, that's not a guarantee because it's emergency room. If you're there because you have a cold and you just can't go anywhere else, it's not an emergency compared to the nine-year-old that fell down the stairs and split his skull open. Yeah. So, yeah. Like my ex-husband was super prone to kidney stones and we spent a long time waiting in the ER a few times because... All they're going to do is give you painkillers and tell you to wait. And they can do that any old time. The, and not only did this motherfucker be like, I'm just going to go someplace else. He crashed the goddamn ambulance. Which means somebody else, by the way, isn't getting the help they need that night. Nope. Because that's one less ambulance that's available for yeah. someone else who's having an emergency. And I, I'm sorry, this mugshot. You you getting mugshot on here, man. You're getting look at the the smug dick. He's like, and yeah, I did it. And well, well, jail will see you very promptly. You that is that just got an asshole. I'm sure, you'll find their service very efficient. That is an asshole expression. I that that is that is almost the DreamWorks face. Do you know about this? No. Oh, like on every single one of their posters, every DreamWorks film is an animal making this face. <laughs> I have not noticed that. It's like, look, Boss Baby. Boss Baby making that fucking face of the fucking DreamWorks movie. <clears throat> it's a DreamWorks face. Anyway. Okay. I promised you cringe. Uh, normally I indicate a certain set of genitals for which to cross your legs. Um, depending. This one, I think this is going to hurt everybody equally. No matter what set of genitals you have. My favorite kind. No, you're, you're no, Tara. You're, you're celebrating. You shouldn't. Um, it's been two weeks off. What can hurt me? I'm going to let you digest in a second. What can hurt me, she says. Wow. Doctors pull a three foot long phone cable from a man's penis. Wow. To relieve the itchiness. That is... Well, that must have been some credible gonorrhea. Like, like what? Like, I'm a redhead, so I'm always itchy. I don't know if you guys know this about redheads, but we don't have real skin. We have like, you know, Velveeta is cheese food. We have like skin food. It's like skin, but it's not really skin. So we're pretty much always fucking itchy somewhere. And there are nights I don't sleep. Like, at least once a month, there's a night when I don't sleep. I just stay up till, like, 6 a.m. ripping the skin off my legs because I can't stop the itching. 
And I have never, ever been this itchy. I've had an inch and a half deep hole in my leg that had to heal from the bottom up. That itches. I've never been itchy enough to jam three feet of anything anywhere in me. Chinese doctor successfully removed a three foot long phone cable from a pensioner using laser technology. The man said to be in his 60s thought of inserting a cable to stop itchiness in the urethra was caused by uh, prostatitis, an inflammation of the prostate. Mm, I had an ex-boyfriend that had that. That's no fun. However, the cable tied a knot in the bladder. How? And caused bleeding See, when the man tried to pull it you out. You drop your fucking headphones and they're in a knot. <laughs> Those fuckers are <laughs> sentient. They're little AIs, and they just tie themselves in knots just to fuck with us. According to that's proof. According to Can Can News, the unnamed pensioner inserted a one meter long phone charging cable into his penis to relieve the itchiness. He was rushed to a hot to uh, the Lane Hospital on March 30th. Sought medical help. Doctor Gao Zhengfeng, a urologist at the hospital, noticed the cable measured five millimeters wide and had tied a knot inside the man's bladder under a scan. The knot gets tighter when the patient tried to pull it out. That caused bleeding in the bladder. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Oh. oh. The reporter asked the man, did you sterilize the cable before putting it in? Quote, I just roughly washed it under running water. Honey. Do you think that's going to make your infection better? Jesus. Because it's, it's, it's not. It's not. It's going to make it so much worse. Like, that's... I kind of respect that, because I've been, I've been itchy enough that I have literally scratched myself to bleeding. I've been itchy enough that I have taken boar, boar's hair hairbrushes to my skin until I bled. I have never been itchy enough to jam three feet of something inside my body. All of you in the channel, all of you, I warned your asses. I fuck, you're all, you're all sad now. I warned you. You were warned when we started tonight. <laughs> Tom, I kind of respect it. Tom says, if my dick could get PTSD, this is when it would get it. Like, when I had that hole in my leg, there were days I thought about just taking a mascara brush and going to work in there. Yeah, but that, okay, okay, okay. That's, one, that's a hole in your leg, which is an entirely different thing. This is your penis. I, I mean, I don't have one of those. I imagine that would not be fun. Okay, but it's the urethra, which in just about every instance, male or female, the urethra is one-way traffic only. Generally, yes. Unless you're into certain kinks, which is fine. But, but you know, sterilize that shit. You, you, you know, consult a professional. Use the right tool for the job and sterilize it. Shoving shit up your urethra is is not for amateurs. No. And and don't there are there aren't YouTube videos that'll teach you how. There aren't. But they make special rods for that. They're not three feet long because Jesus. Uh, just the the. the he but got just it. imagine sitting there and like just feeding it in, and that couldn't have been easy. Like, did was there something on the end? Because like, have you ever lost the string in your hoodie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like trying to get that string back from inside oh, the hoodie. Jesus. Picture that, but with three feet inside your fucking urethra. And there's no other end. Like, there's no other hole to stick your finger in. And it's his phone cord, right? right. So you know what happens? He's sitting there, he's doing the feeding, and then... <laughs> oh, come on, man. But just think about, like, Pushing, trying to push, like, that's not a stiff wire. No. That took a lot of effort. 
<laughs> oh, Tara, just because someone has the great will to do a horrible thing does not mean it's not a horrible thing. But you have to respect that. No, system. you don't. You do. You don't. I think you do. You don't. I mean, I think after what he's been through, he deserves a bit of grudging respect for going through that much effort just to scratch an itch inside his person. <laughs> That's one of the stupidest... You Go to the doctor! Just take the antibiotics, man. Go to the fucking doctor! I mean, like here... I, said, I had next that had prostatitis. It's not fun. It happens. It happens. It's just a thing that can happen to you. Like, like strep throat or pink eye. Like, it's just a thing you can get. Go to the happens. doctor! And it's not fun. Go but to... you deal with it. Oh. And anyway, like, what would, wouldn't the better route to your prostate be the other way? Ugh. Like, they don't check your prostate at the doctor by sticking their finger up your dick, as I'm aware. So you were ringing the wrong bell anyway. Yes, the first thing we've learned is just because someone has the will to do an incredibly, incredibly stupid thing. Doesn't mean it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm saying he deserves a little bit of respect. I for... don't respect that. I mean, that's hardcore. You're, you've got a fucking USB dongle flopping out of your dong. I'm not respecting that. <laughs> I could plug your ass into my laptop. I'm not respecting that. So, like, did he put a safety pin on the other end? Like, if you're trying to restring your hoodie? <laughs> how? I'm really curious how he managed it, to be honest uh, with you. We have learned that just because the service at your ER is a little, little slow, doesn't mean the ambulances are self-serve. No. It's not a fucking ride and share. Doesn't become a buffet. We've learned if you have to have it, have to try to figure out which of the two of you is more drunk, the answer is yes. Yeah, the answer is both. Get an Uber and deal with it. This is one of the stupidest things I've ever had to say. We've learned don't throw carrots at alligators. <laughs> we should, like, I wish all this time we've been keeping track of sentences we never thought we'd have to say, but became somehow relevant. Like, we play the weirdest game of Mad Libs every week. Christ. If you t we've learned if you tell the police, come and get me, they will. They will. They, they actually will. will. It's, it's, they, they will get you. That's the rare occasion on which they will take requests. And finally, uh, we've learned if you're a contractor, um, the phrase you need to remember is payment up front. Not, I'm or going to take your roof small back. small claims court. Small claims court. Yeah, not, um, I'm going to take the roof back. It doesn't work that way. That's, that's a dick move. That's it's, not cool. It's not like, it's not like Walmart. You can't exchange it for another roof. Not a nice thing to do to somebody. Uh. I missed you. <laughs>